One win down, three more to go. The Brew Crew held on last night, and now we're looking ahead to tonight's game. Plus, the Brewers' playoff run is helping out Packers fans hoping to score affordable tickets to Monday night's game. We'll explain why straight ahead. This is News 3 This Morning, Saturday. Good Saturday morning and welcome to News 3 This Morning, Saturday. It is 5 a.m. on this October 13th, and I'm Josh Breider with meteorologist Chris Reese. Chilly out there this morning. It's even kind of cold in here. It, it is. The so we we have officially ended the growing season. The temperature dropped down to 29 degrees. So we did achieve the hard freeze, but it's not over yet. The temperature still has some room to drop. So we're going to keep those freeze warnings in play going through nine o'clock this morning. Let's go ahead and show you guys what temperatures are like across the area. You see a lot of even low 20s showing up in some sure. spots, but a lot of 20s, 21 in Black River Falls, 32 in Janesville and 30 right here in Madison Platteville, the warm spot there at 33. But as we begin to zoom things out, what you'll notice is that the farther north and west you go, the warmer it actually gets. Temperatures there in the 40s in some cases. That's what the warm front that came through, and that'll play an impact in our weather going through the rest of today. The dew point at 27 this morning, that does mean that our temperature has still a little bit of wiggle room to drop just before the sun comes up. So we'll see if we can actually get even cooler than the 29 that we did achieve. But like I mentioned, warmer to the north and west, that's where we are seeing some rain right now associated with the cold or with the warm front rather that will allow temperatures to really take off this afternoon. We should see highs right around 50 degrees or so in the peak heating of the day with plenty of sunshine. Traffic is running smoothly this morning. There's the belt line. It's showing some backups around uh, Monona, but no camera verification is showing that as of now. Still nice this time of year with the sunshine. It can warm you up. Still feels good out there. Oh, yes, it's going to feel fantastic this afternoon. If, if, if 51 is okay for you, it's going to feel fantastic, especially with the sunshine. Hey, we can't complain with the, when we haven't <laughs> had that sun for a very long Absolutely, time. Absolutely, I know what you mean. <laughs> All right, Chris, thank you. Well, we begin in Milwaukee this morning, and what a win for the Brewers. They beat the Dodgers 6-5 to five in Game 1 of the National League Championship Series at Miller Park. News 3's Melissa Kim shows us the game-changing moment for the team in a victory that came down to two outs in the ninth. So the Brewers squeaking by the Dodgers in game one of the NLCS last night. And the difference in this game ended up being Brandon Woodruff's solo home run off of Clayton Kershaw in the third inning. Oh, are you kidding? Home run, Woodruff! Not just a career moment for him, but a momentum swing in this game. It's something, you know, obviously coming into the day, you don't know in your wildest dreams that that's going to happen. Definitely changed the uh, changed the vibe for sure. And once I knew it was going, it was just one of those uh, kind of moments where you just, you're not really thinking, you know, you, you just, I was just letting some emotion out. And, um, um, you know, it, it was a cool moment and I was happy that I could just go out there and, and do it for the team. So about those guys in the bullpen, do they like at bats? Do they practice swinging at all? Well, don't expect anything from Josh Hader. I personally do not get any at bats, don't practice it at all. Um, I do not like hitting, that's why I became a pitcher because I couldn't hit a fastball or a curveball. Now I figured out I can't hit a changeup. What to expect there from this carefully concocted pitching situation? Well, Craig Council told us last night after the game that it'll just depend on who's available. At Miller Park, Melissa Kim, News 3 this morning. Will the Brewers nab their 13th consecutive win? We'll have to watch and see. First pitch of the game two is at 4.09 this afternoon at Miller Park. If you're hoping to score some tickets to Monday night's Packers game, you're in luck this morning. The Monday night Brewers game in L.A. is actually causing a drop in ticket sales for the Packers 49 game, 49ers game. rather. Lots of fans are planning on going to a multi-screen sports bar or staying home with remote in hand, flipping back and forth between the pack and the crew. Ticket brokers say Monday night Lambeau Field tickets are usually difficult to buy, but with the competition from the Brewers game, many are selling at $20 below face value. They say on game day you could find tickets at 50 bucks or less. On a very busy Saturday of sports, the Badgers are ready for their second Big Ten game of the road this season. They're in Ann Arbor against Michigan. The Badgers are ranked 15th right now, while the Wolverines are 12th. News 3 Sports Director Jay Wilson has your three things to watch in tonight's game. 
When the Badgers play at Michigan tonight at 6.30, here are three things to watch. The Badgers seem to have recovered nicely from their loss to BYU with solid wins at Iowa and last week against Nebraska. Jonathan Taylor's back on track with 221 yards against the Cornhuskers. He's again leading the country with an average of 168 yards rushing per game. But the Badgers will face a great test against Jim Harbaugh's Michigan team. Their quarterback, Shea Patterson, transferred from Ole Miss in the offseason, and he figures, uh, looks like he's figuring things out. After a slow start, he's the second most efficient passer in the Big Ten. And winning at Michigan will be a huge challenge for the Badgers. Wisconsin has won its last 10 true road games, but its last road loss was at Michigan, 2016. They'll have over 107,000 fans in the Big House, but the Badgers say it's not intimidating there. It's fun. And those are three things to watch with Wisconsin and Michigan. ESPN's College Game Day will broadcast from Ann Arbor this morning. Kickoff is at 6.30. The UW-Madison campus was politically charged last night for the first debate between Republican Attorney General Brad Schimmel and his Democratic challenger Josh Call. The debate started off with Call accusing Schimmel of taking too long to test thousands of unanalyzed sexual assault kits and for spending money on promotion, promotional material rather than prioritizing the kits. Schimmel countered that the testing is done and he solved a decades-long problem in three years. The two also talked about their plan to battle the state's growing opioid epidemic. Uh, first, I think we need to ensure that our uh, enforcement efforts are targeting large-scale traffickers who are sending drugs like heroin and fentanyl and meth across county lines and state lines. I am proud to have worked to dismantle drug trafficking conspiracies as a federal prosecutor, and I think we need to do more of that, uh, from our, have our AG's office play a bigger role uh, in those types of cases. But we also need to expand access to treatment far more seriously than we have so far, so that people who fall into the trap of addiction are able to get the help they need to get back on their feet. And then I think we need an AG who's going to be serious, finally, about holding the pharmaceutical companies accountable. I made this my number one priority as Attorney General, and we're leading the nation in the work we're doing. Wisconsin's recognized as a national leader. I put, on the enforcement side, I put many more agents in the field working drug cases. I put regional prosecutors throughout Wisconsin to work on this. We have increased the availability of safety equipment for law enforcement and increased their training to be able to do this effectively. We wrote and obtained the largest methamphetamine and heroin enforcement grants in the nation right here in Wisconsin, and that's money we're turning out to law enforcement agencies to do effective work. But I know from my experience that we won't arrest our way out of this drug epidemic. We need a comprehensive approach, and that's what we've put in place. The candidates will debate two more times before Election Day. Candidates running for a seat in the U.S. Senate will debate tonight. This is actually their second time this week. Incumbent U.S. Senator Tammy Baldwin and challenger State Senator Leah Vukmir will be in Wausau for the debate. It's sponsored by the Wisconsin Broadcasters Association. You can watch it all right here on WISC TV 3 starting at 7. It is day three of the Wisconsin Science Festival and from flight simulators to a robot zoo, there's really something for everyone. The four-day festival includes events from across the state, from here in Madison to Baraboo and La Crosse. Today there are several sessions focused on getting more women and minorities interested in STEM-related careers. You can find out more about the hundreds of events happening around Wisconsin on the website there. The bottom of your screen right now, WISCIFest.org. The cold is clearly here, which means snow isn't far behind. And whether we like it or not, it's time to start preparing your car for winter. The Middleton Police Department is hosting a car weatherization event this morning for any elderly folks who'd like to learn some tips. That's at Middleton Ford from 9 to noon. Mechanics will check your settings and safety features to make sure everything is ready for the freezing temperatures and snow. You can call the number there at the bottom of the screen. We'll be sure to put that up on channel3000.com as well. A first alert traffic note for people driving on Madison's east side this morning. Stoughton Road will be closed in both directions between Highway 30 and East Washington Avenue all weekend long. Crews are working to repair the railroad crossing there. This after a number of drivers complained about the condition of that crossing. Some claimed they had to slam on their brakes or risk ruining their suspensions. The closure started at 8 o'clock last night and runs until 6 o'clock Monday morning. 
Traffic is being detoured on e onto East Wash, the interstate and Highway 30 while that stretch of Stoughton Road is closed. What well, is now 10 minutes past 5 and after a roller coaster week of highs near 80 and lows approaching the 30s, we're off to a very, very chilly start this Saturday morning. Chris just mentioned the growing season is over. Here's a live look outside. There's the capital this morning. Chris is in next with a full weekend forecast. And if you're hunkering in with the colder temperatures this morning, there are several shows and movies for you this weekend. Will has your three things to watch on News 3 this morning, Saturday. Good morning. We have ended the growing season officially with temperatures that have made it into the upper 20s and even some of the low and mid 20s for a lot of folks this morning. So the alert day that was issued yesterday, we're going to keep that going for at least the next few hours because we have frost that is occurring along with the freeze that is occurring as we go through sunrise. Temperatures in Madison are at 30 degrees, 20s as you work your way just to the north, 28 in the Dells, 21 is the temperature in Black River Falls. But as we go even farther north and west, you'll notice temperatures actually begin to warm up a little bit. That is a warm front that is going to be impacting our weather soon. But in the meantime, we do have clear skies out there and there's still a little bit of wiggle room for those temperatures to drop a few more degrees with dew points that are in the upper 20s. We'll see how that plays out. But ultimately, temperatures are anywhere between 5 and about 15 degrees colder this morning as opposed to yesterday morning, sometimes a second morning 
morning after a cold front comes through is typically the cooler morning. But we are not concerned about any kind of rain or snow here in Madison. There's a little bit of rain and snow shower activity across portions of the Dakotas and Minnesota. And that again is that warm front that's headed our way. But ultimately, the Midwest as a whole is pretty quiet this morning. That's because high pressure is going to stay in control today. Then we'll have a cold front come through. That's going to come in as we go through your Sunday with a weak little wave of low pressure riding along that. We're going to pay close attention to that. Let's take you hour by hour. By the time we get you towards about lunch, we'll see temperatures in the mid 40s, low 50s for those highs this afternoon. Then the clouds increase. We may see a shower or two overnight, but watch what happens tomorrow. You see kind of uh, the rain snow mix moving in from the west ultimately, and we should be just warm enough for rain, but it could also be just cold enough in the upper levels of our atmosphere that we could see a snowflake or two mix in. But ultimately, temperatures are going to be staying below average as we go through the next several days, uh, but still warm enough to keep any kind of rain that falls as liquid. The good news is we are not really expecting much in the way of rain. The next seven to 10 days are full of sunshine out there with temperatures that are in the 50s for highs and 30s and 40s for lows. That is a 10 day forecast we have not seen in a very long time. It sure is. That is the perfect fall 10 day forecast. That kind of weather is what we need to see to really get those colors popping around here in southern Wisconsin where they haven't peaked yet. Loving that sunshine. All right, Absolutely. Chris, thank you. Mm -hmm. Imagine all the people. Yoko Ono is honoring her late husband, John Lennon, with a cover version of his iconic song, Imagine. She released the song to commemorate what would have been the music legend's 78th birthday. Until recently, the song was credited solely to Lennon, but Ono was added as a co-writer last year. Right now, a collection of handwritten lyrics and sketches from Bob Dylan are on display at a gallery in London. The lyrics of some of Dylan's best known songs from 1961 to 2006 are paired with drawings made by the singer. This exhibit is the first time ever that Dylan has allowed the music and its words to be linked to his visual art. The collection will travel to China next year and then head to Europe before eventually making it to the U.S. From music to movies now, grab an apple cider, a bag of popcorn, and curl up on the couch. There are plenty of shows and films for you to enjoy this weekend without even leaving the comfort of your own home. Here's Will Loper with your three things to watch. Hey guys, uh, it's Kayla back with another video. New on home video this week is the movie Eighth Grade. Not quiet. Most quiet, Kayla Day. I don't talk a lot at school, but if people talk to me and stuff, they'd find out that I'm like really funny and cool and talkative. The highly reviewed film follows a 13-year-old girl who navigates school, friendships, and family. I'm really like nervous all the time. I try really hard not to feel that way. But you just need to face your fears and let people know they're really you. Eighth grade is available to rent or buy everywhere now. One more week of eighth grade, huh? Huh? I said one more week of eighth grade, right? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, huh? Now I want you two to get good rest. What if I have a bad dream? Well, I'm sure we can handle any dream you have. Start getting into the spooky October mood with a new show on Netflix, the Haunting of Hill House. The show follows five siblings who grew up in the most haunted house in America. We're not like any other family. We're different because of where we grew up. All 10 episodes of The Haunting of Hill House are available to stream on Netflix now. You don't have to worry now, sweetie. That really bad dream. Of course I'd wake you. If you're looking for something less scary but still Halloween related, check out 2001's Donnie Darko. Why are you wearing that stupid bunny suit? Why are you wearing that stupid man suit? In the days leading up to Halloween 1988, Jake Gyllenhaal stars as a boy who must save the world 
by doing what a time-traveling bunny named Frank tells him to do. Has he ever told you about his friend Frank? Frank? Yes, the giant bunny rabbit. The what? They are in great danger. Where did you come from? Do you believe in time travel? Donnie Darko is available to rent or buy everywhere now. People run in circles, it's a very, very mad world. Happy watching. Those are the three things you need to watch, and this is Will Loper for News 3 This Morning, Saturday. Denzel Washington's storied career puts him back in the spotlight. The 63-year-old actor is being honored by the American Film Institute. He will receive the prestigious Lifetime Achievement Award in Los Angeles next June. Washington has nine Academy Award nominations, including Oscar wins for Glory and Training Day. He also won a Tony Award for Fences. It is 20 minutes past five, making sure bikers are seen. That's the dilemma one American city is now facing, and now they think they have a solution. They see these ballers were fast to put up, cheap to build, and are good looking. Would they work here in Madison? We'll take a look when News 3 This Morning Saturday returns.
Good morning out there. Temperatures did drop below freezing. So far we are at 30 degrees. They made it all the way down to 29. So we've actually warmed a degree or so, but typically just before sunrise, those temperatures have a tendency to drop a few more degrees. So we're going to watch the potential for that, but we do still have temperatures that are in the 20s elsewhere. 25 in Watoma. 20 in Black River Falls as of now 31 for our friends down in Monroe, but that's the reason that we do have this freeze warning. It's going to go until about nine o'clock. Once we get past nine o'clock, temperature should begin to warm above freezing. We should reach 46 by the time we get you towards lunchtime. Highs this afternoon should be in the low 50s with clouds increasing closer towards sunset. Josh. Thanks, Chris. It is 525 this morning. The state of Wisconsin is asking for your help tracking wolves, coyotes and bobcats this winter. The DNR's monitoring program relies on volunteers to identify tracks along thousands of miles. There are training courses available to people who might be interested in getting involved. Most of them happen up north where you'll find those wolf packs. You can visit the DNR's website for more information. Just search for carnivore tracking. If biking is more your speed, as it is for many Wisconsinites, especially here in Madison, listen to this. A California city is elevating its bike safety game with a new installment they say is both effective and good looking. Cat Du explains. When it comes to increasing bike safety in San Jose, the Department of Transportation was going for fast, cheap and good looking. The DOT believes they got three out of three with these new green plastic posts along 3rd Street called bollards. This is, I think, the prettiest solution that we can do on a, on a short budget in a quick time frame. Crews have installed 1,900 of them, mostly in downtown San Jose. At eight inches across with thick bands of reflective tape, they do their intended job well. Separate the bike lane from car traffic to give cyclists more breathing room. Do you feel safer? Oh yeah, definitely the separations from the car and the bike lane is a pretty big gap, so you're definitely safe. Installation takes a few minutes each with drilling into the asphalt and attaching a six inch bolt with some epoxy. They're flexible yet sturdy enough to withstand more than a few moderate bumps. Include people walking into them, hopefully not driving into them, but uh, that will doubtless happen eventually. Speaking of, vehicles looking to make right turns will be forced to slow down and go wide. The idea is to make sure bikers stay out of the car's blind spot. I think they're a good idea. If you're already gonna gentrify this entire city, you might as well just do the smallest of favors to people that want to save on gas is riding the bike lanes and I think it's going to help a lot of people stay out of their cars. As for the color, the DOT picked green after some community input and also because it matches the bike lane colors. A quick check of the manufacturer's website shows San Jose could have fared a lot worse, especially with black and brown. LA's Westwood neighborhood has them in white and the only other Bay Area city to have them is Palo Alto also in white. What do you tell people who say that the bollards are kind of ugly? Um, well, safety is our number one priority. Total cost was $1.5 million. Love them or hate them, the bollards are only temporary and should last long enough until the city can find the money for a more permanent solution. In San Jose, Kitto, KPIX 5. It is 527 this morning and still ahead this morning. A check of the headlines happening right now, including the bargain price tickets you can snag ahead of Monday night's Packers game. Plus, from award-winning folk singers to friendly furry animals and traditional Indian dancing, the popular Kids in the Rotunda series is back at the Overture. Get out your calendars. News 3 this morning Saturday will return in a moment.
Straight ahead this morning, a preview of this month's diverse lineup of local, regional, and national performers all coming to the Overture, specifically picked to entertain kids. This is News 3 This Morning, Saturday. Good morning and welcome back to News 3 This Morning. Saturday it is just after 5.30 on this October 13th. I'm Josh Breider. Meteorologist Chris Reese has your very sunny forecast. Yes, the sun is here just ahead, but first, here's what's making news this morning. What a win for the Brewers. The Brew Crew beat the Dodgers 6-5 in Game 1 of the National League Championship Series at Miller Park last night. The Brewers leaned on their bullpen after jumping out to an early lead thanks in part to reliever Brandon Woodruff's solo home run against Clayton Kershaw. Milwaukee has now won 12 straight games they haven't lost since September 22nd. Game 2 will be played at Miller Park this afternoon. First pitch is at 4.09. Right now, the Monday night Brewers game in L.A. is causing a drop in ticket sales for the Packers 49ers game. Lots of fans are planning on going to a multi-screen sports bar or, of course, staying at home with remote in hand, flipping back and forth between the pack and the crew. Ticket brokers say Monday night Lambeau Field tickets are usually a difficult get, but with the competition from the Brewers game, many are selling at 20 bucks below face value. On game day, you could find tickets at $50 or less. And on this very busy sports-filled Saturday, the Badgers are getting ready for their second Big Ten game on the road tonight. They're in Ann Arbor to face Michigan. The Badgers are ranked 15th right now, while the Wolverines are at 12th. The last time the Badgers lost a conference game on the road was 2016 when they lost at Michigan. ESPN's College Game Day will be broadcasting from Ann Arbor this morning. Kickoff is set for 6.30. 5.33 right now, and Chris, kind of cold out there. The end of the growing season is official now. That's right. We did watch those temperatures drop into the upper 20s this morning. By the way, earlier you started talking about the sunshine. I don't quite know what that is. Perhaps we'll find out later on going into the afternoon. But nonetheless, temperatures are fairly chilly. We're going to keep the freeze warnings going until 9 o'clock before we begin to get those to expire. The temperature 30 degrees in Madison right now. 20s as you work your way over towards the north end the east 25 in Watoma safe for Camp Douglas and per usual Black River Falls is our cold spot. They are one degree away from dropping into the teens. But as we zoom things out, you'll see that we're warmer working our way up towards parts of Minnesota and North Dakota. That is where a warm front has already come through. That'll be coming through our parts of the country as we go through the rest of today. So temperatures 30 right now. We still have a little bit of room for temperatures to drop into the upper 20s in Madison, but we will see plenty of sunshine today. We are not concerned about cloud cover like we were yesterday until we get you into the overnight hours. That's when those clouds will begin to increase once again ahead of a potential shot at a little bit of rain, possibly mixed with a snowflake or two as we head into Sunday and Sunday night. Josh. Chris, thank you. Well, there's a chance for you to help kids who might not otherwise get a chance to go to college this weekend. We've told you about the Opportunity 34. It's a new scholarship program in Verona. It's named after Will Kellerman's basketball number. A 21-year-old was killed in a car crash in Verona last fall. His family wants to help other kids further their education. They're donating the proceeds of a basketball tournament today to the scholarship. That event is at C. Verona on Prairie Heights Drive. You can find more information on the Channel 3000 mobile app. Engaging, educational, and of course entertaining. The Overture's popular Kids in the Rotunda series is back for a new season, bringing a diverse lineup of local and national performers ready to entertain young audiences. Mary Rose is the program coordinator of the Kids in the Rotunda. She joins us this morning with what we can expect this month. Thanks for coming in. Hi, thank you for having me, Josh. So tell us a little bit about what you guys do over there. So Kids in the Rotunda is a free family performance series that operates October through April, nearly every Saturday. We have performance is at 9 a.m., 11 a.m., and also at 1 p.m., and that performance is sign language interpreted. Um, so the performance series has been around for uh, about 37 years, uh, so we are lucky enough to have a lot of parents who are bringing their children to this series who went when they were children as well. 
Um, we offer a really diverse lineup, like you said, of musicians, drummers, dancers, uh, magicians, jugglers, all sorts of entertainment. And it's really a wonderful opportunity for kids to uh, explore creativity and begin to build an appreciation for the arts. Is there a certain age that you guys kind of target? Yeah, so we target um, about two through 10. Uh, so it depends on the show. Some shows are more suitable for a little bit older audiences or a little bit younger audiences. I would like to say our average age right now of our attendees is probably about three to five. Okay, so why is something like this important for the community? That's a great question. Uh, so I really think that Kids in the Rotunda nurtures an understanding of the importance of creativity and the power of creativity in the community. And it also gets uh, young children and their families comfortable at Overture and begins to sort of nurture an understanding for um, arts appreciation and um, uh, all of the different ways that we can be creative. So we have a lot of different kinds of creativity. Um, last week, for instance, uh, when we started off Kids in the Rotunda, we brought in Zoozort Live Animal Program. So we had a uh, USDA licensed animal educator come in and talk about um, her animals. So we can do a lot of different things in the performing arts. And I, I love that children have the opportunity to see that diversity. So you guys are obviously very busy over there every month. What can people expect here in the next uh, coming weekends? Yeah, so today we are welcoming a mad scientist into the rotunda who is going to be introducing children to the world of chemistry. Uh, this event is part of the Wisconsin Science Festival, which, which runs October 11th through 14th and has a lot of different events for uh, people young and old, scientists and non-scientists across the state. All right, well, if people are interested in coming and checking you guys out, how can they get some more information? That's a great question. Uh, I would encourage anybody to follow us on Facebook at Overture's Kids in the Rotunda or to check out our website, overture.org slash KIR. We have all of our uh, events listed on there. And if you follow us on Facebook, we post seating updates as well as information about upcoming shows. Well, certainly sounds like a lot of fun for the little kiddos out there. Yeah, it is. And uh, we'll be rounding out the season with uh, three other performances this month. We have on October 24th, which is actually a Wednesday, a special Kids in the Rotunda for downtown Madison Family Halloween. And we'll be welcoming our local performer, Ken Longquist, who will be singing some spooky songs uh, from his Pumpkinland album. And then we'll have, we'll be giving away candy and be doing a costume photo booth from 3 to 6 p.m. And then on October 20th, we're bringing a new performer. Uh, her name is Angela. Angela Puerta, and she is a Colombian singer-songwriter who will be singing in English and Spanish. And then on October 27th, we will be doing our annual sing-along with the Jerry Ensemble. Uh, the Jerry Ensemble is a group of very talented local high school musical theater students, and they will be uh, doing a sing-along with our kids. And this is actually the 10th anniversary of the Jerry Awards, which is Overture's high school musical awards program. So we're very excited to have them back. All right. Well, good luck to everything. Yeah. We'll see you here next time, Mary. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Stay with us. More news through this morning, Saturday, right after this.
That alert day from Friday night does continue for at least the next few hours. That's just because a frost and a freeze is actively occurring. But as we go through the morning by about 9 o'clock, that's when those freeze mornings do come down. We'll see temperatures pushing 40 degrees, 46 by lunchtime. Highs will be right around 50 today with clouds on the increase later on this evening. Thanks, Chris. It is the weekend in the 608. Hey, here's a look at what's going on around town. First, the summer outdoor music season may be over, but there are still festivals to attend. The Wisconsin Book Festival continues this weekend. The event's mission is to engage authors and readers at events held year round. This is the weekend when the most literary talent converges on the Madison Central Library and other downtown venues. Among them, Rebecca Treister, author of Good and Mad, The Revolutionary Power of Women's Anger this evening, and panels of women writers of science fiction this morning. There's also the Wisconsin Science Festival happening this weekend. It's the event's eighth year at the University of Wisconsin Madison campus. It aims to spark interest in science and discovery in people of all ages. There are presentations, science projects, and more on display in a whole bunch of panels featuring some of the brightest scientific minds. You can check out the full schedule at wisconsinsciencefest.org slash events. A Grammy Award winning musician is in town this weekend. On Sunday night, 20 time Grammy Award winner Pat Metheny, known for her play, improvisation, jazz guitar, and other instruments, will be at the <coughs> Memorial Union Shannon Hall. You can catch the show starting at 8 o'clock tomorrow night. There are a couple of performances this weekend by women artists meant to upset expectations. The first is Music Theater of Madison's production titled Beyond the Ingenue. An ingenue in musical theater is a female character depicted as a naive and unsophisticated person. But in this production, the women on stage will be dealing with real issues and singing works by famous female musicians such as Sarah Bareilles and Dolly Parton. Beyond the Ingenue held its first performance last night at the Brink Lounge, but will be performed four more times over the next couple of weeks in Black Earth, Stoughton, Middleton, and elsewhere. The other notable event is Dancing on the Ceiling performances by women of a certain age, co-presented by Lai Chao Ping Dance and UW-Madison Dance Department. It will consist of seven acclaimed female dancers over 50 and take place this afternoon in the performance space in Lathrop Hall. As always, a reminder, you can pick up a copy of this month's Madison Magazine for all of the best in the Madison area. What well, is 544? It's like we skipped from summer to winter this week with temperatures swinging from the low or the near 80s to low 30s. But what can else can you expect here in the Midwest? Hey, here's a live look over the Capitol this Saturday morning where farmers and shoppers are in for a chilly market. I'll have your full forecast next. But first, if you have a little kid turning three years old soon, please let us know so we can show their picture on TV. Thanks for watching News 3 This Morning Saturday.
Good morning. Temperatures are still very below freezing across the area, so we're going to keep that alert day going for the next couple of hours. That's because widespread frost and a hard freeze. Those are actively occurring as we speak. Temperatures right now are in the 20s and 30s for a lot of folks. 30 degrees in Madison. We've actually warmed up from 29 earlier this morning, but still just to the north. 28 in Juneau. Same for Watertown. Black River Falls is at 22 right now. And you'll notice temperatures are warmer as you work your way towards the south and west and really the north and west as a whole. That's because there's a warm front that is eating away at some of that colder air that we have over Wisconsin this morning. So we'll see those temperatures begin to warm up. But in the meantime, before we get the sun up and before that warm front comes through, temperatures do have a couple more degrees of wiggle room and we'll see if they hold steady or not. But if they drop, they'll go into the upper 20s once again with that dew point sitting in at 27. We are not concerned about any kind of cloud cover, any kind of rain or snow for us this morning. As we zoom things out, you'll see some light snow over parts of Minnesota along with some light rain where they are warmer over parts of North Dakota this morning. But as we zoom out as a whole, really the entire Midwest is quiet. That's because high pressure is in control and that high pressure will remain in control overall through today. By tomorrow morning, we'll have a cold front sneaking its way back into the picture that'll sag south just as a wave of low pressure kind of rides along that and that will likely bring snow to parts of Iowa and Kansas and Nebraska and whatnot. But let's bring you closer to home and take you hour by hour on how that begins to impact us. 46 by lunchtime. We'll see those highs right around 50 with the clouds increasing overnight. Here comes that cold front coming into town through your Sunday morning. It might have a shower or two with it, but most of that will be light. Then you'll notice towards later on through Sunday morning, especially north and west, we could have a mix of some rain and snow, but then the main rainmaker comes in as we get you through Sunday evening and that does have the potential of at least having a snowflake or two being mixed in. But ultimately that cold front's going to keep temperatures being well below average through the next several days. We'll get a little bit of a rebound before temperatures essentially stay below average going through uh, the next uh, several days. That's likely going to be the trend going through the rest of October, but it comes with a lot of sunshine other than tomorrow. And tonight there are no rain chances, Josh, over the next six to 10 days. Ultimately, we are looking at plenty of sunshine and temperatures topping out in the 50s. Wow, it's about time. It is about <laughs> time. It is finally fall weather in Wisconsin. True right. fall weather. All right, Chris, thank you. Well, you've been asking you to share your morning with us and check out this photo Jim Bradley sent us. This is from Manitowoc. That's a beautiful picture there. Absolutely. A few broken beautiful. clouds there. Thanks for sharing, Jim. What does your morning look like? Be sure to take a picture and post it to the Channel 3000 Facebook page or Twitter or Instagram. Use that hashtag MyNews3Morning, and that's how we share our favorites right here on the show. 551 right now, there's a full hour of news for this morning ahead at 8. Then on our news at 6 and 10, a local business is back open several months after closing its doors. We're heading to Star Liquor to talk to its new owners. But first, a student with a rare genetic condition gets an even more rare honor. We'll take you to Kaylee's special night thanks to her classmates when news for this morning Saturday continues.
Welcome back at 555 at high schools across the country. It is now homecoming season and in California sophomores voted one of their classmates with special needs this year's homecoming princess. That's awesome. Steve Large takes us along her special night. Look no further than this Liberty Ranch high school football field for a life lesson people here at its homecoming game. You're just going to smile, hold your flowers nice. The sophomore class electing Kaylee Martinez as its homecoming princess. Hey guys! <laughs> Martinez has a rare condition called Williams syndrome, a genetic disorder. Williams syndrome affects one in 10,000 people and it occurs at birth and it can happen to anybody. Kaylee has persevered and says she always wanted to be a princess. Was that fun? Yeah. Were you nervous? No. You did great. Thank you. Her little brother Gavin got her name on the homecoming ballot and the sophomore class made sure she won. I just tell him the smile on her face that she's very thankful and appreciative of what our community did out here. Kaylee's kindness is infectious. Kaylee's one of the favorites by far. Her style, sassy. What did you like about your dress? It's poofy. It's poofy? Yes. Kaylee's classmates giving her a chance to shine at her high school homecoming Love you, Brian. as their class princess. Well, this is a great night for me. I don't want to ever forget it. The sophomores showing true class and sharing a life lesson on this high school football field. Well done, boys! Helping others reach their dreams. That is truly a crowning achievement. Amazing. Kaylee's favorite classes at school are Spanish and cooking. When she grows up, she wants to be a teacher. Well, that's fantastic. We need more stories like this. We do. I love the good news. And speaking of good news, your forecast has a lot of that in it as well. Plenty of sunshine as we go through the next seven to ten days. There are one, there's really kind of one chance of rain right now, and that is overnight tonight and then again tomorrow night. But that's even light rain at that. Most of those days should be dry. Enjoy temperatures in the 40s and 50s going through the next several days. Lows will be in the 30s and 40s. Josh, this is the weather that we need to truly get those fall colors to take off. We've we only deserve got a couple it. Weeks. Mm -hmm. All right, Chris, thank you. Thanks for joining us. CBS This Morning Saturday is next. We'll see you back here at 8. Making plans that are weather dependent? Get an accurate 12 hour, even a 10 day forecast. Download the Channel 3000 First Alert Weather app and start planning.